Namaste beautiful yogis. I am here with 25 facts about me. Um, now this is a video I have considered making for the past seven years. I've been here on YouTube for either 10 or less than maybe nine years. And throw this in one of the facts, by the way, memory is, my memory, I forget everything. I'm, I'm not very interested in dates and somehow I don't file them in my head at all. Uh, but anyways, I've considered this video so many times and it's just, I never feel like revealing myself so much because I always like to be behind things. I'm happy to be behind the yoga. I'm happy to be behind um, a brand and to not just base it on my personality. Uh, maybe it's because I have, I'm into astrology and I have a son into a house, but in general, I'm, I'm, I'm big on privacy. And I have, my ego is such that, you know, I don't, <laughs> for some reason, I don't make myself that important to make 25 facts about me, but I think I owe my, owe my audience and the people that have been doing yoga with me for so long and the people that are joining now to just know some random bits about me. So, <laughs> so I will enjoy it actually because I mean, come on, it's enjoyable to share those things and I've uh, recently listened to a couple of those and I find them fun. You get to know something about the person, even if they don't exhaust who they are, you just get to learn a lot about the person. So let's begin. 25 facts about me. <laughs> um, I was born in Bulgaria in 1979, April 19th, and I am the final degrees of Aries. I love astrology, I'll probably, I think I included that in my, um, in my uh, facts. I just sat down and quickly wrote 25 facts uh, about myself. So whatever I've covered, I've covered. I, by no means is this like some exhausting, uh, that, that I'm gonna exhaust everything about me. I, um, the second fact is I had a good stable childhood with amazing supportive parents who never put me down. Um, their parenting was really based on um, trust and uh, um, it wasn't friendship in the sense of uh, just uh, no parent, parental uh, body, but they were very supportive. They um, only um, complimented me, meaning they never put me down. And I knew that I can go to them uh, for about anything that I'm facing. So they were very supportive uh, and there wasn't, uh, they weren't authoritarian at all. They, I had a pretty loosey goosey childhood. Uh, in the sense that there were no rules, but because I'm a very responsible person, I felt that I can never betray them and act in any um, way that can disappoint them. So I was a pretty responsible child, good in school and and so forth. I was just responsible with the trust that was given to me, and I think that's kind of our parenting style. Um, that's another fact. I have a um, six-year-old. Uh, Piscean daughter and we pretty much parent the way my parents parented me. Uh, we s focus on supporting her talents and um, and respect, respecting her and obviously with that there has to be defining boundaries and all of that but that's a different subject. All right next fact Oh. <laughs> I'm doing 25 facts about me. You can throw in a fact. If uh, um, you like to put up with my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually gonna ask Johnny to add a few facts because sometimes when we do facts about ourselves, they're incorrect facts. <laughs> but he wasn't here, so I just made up my own facts. <laughs> All right, next fact. Um, I am an Aries and uh, you know April Aries and I have some classic Aries personality traits such as being very impulsive I act on my gut I never plan uh, I don't have like a short-term long-term etc plan I do have visions and goals so I guess I do have in a sense a plan but when I'm making a decision it's pretty much based on gut um, next uh, 
Uh, that's how I ended up in America. <laughs> it wasn't a planned decision. Um, it was just kind of a spurt of the moment opportunity and I felt like I needed a break and uh, ended up in America and ended up uh, having a PTSD or a post-traumatic stress <laughs> disorder or trauma uh, from immigrating because it was very traumatic. It wasn't, it's never really easy to end up in a different country and shift your entire uh, life and uh, everything. Uh, so it, it, it's been a very emotional journey. I had a very great life in Bulgaria and it's not that it was bad here, but it was uh, quite the shift and quite, I faced a lot of challenges. Um, as a, uh, I've included here this, I love my privacy, but I already said this in the intro. And um, the next one is I don't read novels. I love uh, learning. That's the next one. I'm a lifelong learner. And um, I, I am not afraid to stand corrected or to unlearn things or to have been wrong. And I prefer to keep uh, seeking the truth rather than stand in one place where I feel right. Um, so this next one ties into being an Aries and a classic Aries in certain ways. I forget close to everything. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. I have selective memory, so there are certain things that I will remember really well, but most things go in file and important. That's very classic Aries personality. Do, Johnny, do I forget most things. Yeah. Most. Most things, <laughs> yes. And uh, for the most part, I don't hold grudges. And Johnny confirms that. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty easy going, I think. And I, uh, he, in his words, I pretty much drop everything. If, if, if I ever get mad, I am very easy to drop it midway. Like, I don't even need it to be resolved. I can drop it and just move on because I have this kind of like in my head what's important and what's not important. And I just, I tend to think that I'm not petty at all. Like, I just drop everything that's unimportant in the large scheme of things. So I kind of overview things or view things from kind of like a wider lens and I just I don't I, I don't bother with being right arguing um, petty stuff etc that's that is pretty correct for me that would affect my friendships because a lot of friendships are, are based on kind of like a drama and pettiness and I just don't go for that one bit uh, also and that is confirmed by Johnny not now but before uh, I don't nag I just don't nag at all. I don't. I don't. I don't bring up small stuff and constantly try to to dig and and like you know push buttons and like I just don't do that. Um, okay, so I've studied all forms of spirituality and all forms is a little bit exaggerated, but you know spirituality is kind of my field of um, of exploration. I love learning and studying. I grew up in communist Bulgaria where there wasn't spirituality or religion, uh, but I'm very spiritually inclined and I've studied a lot of forms of spirituality and the one that I most connect to that really speaks to my heart on a very profound level is something that is considered is a cult esoteric Christianity. It's pretty much the Christ teachings without the patriarchal structure, without the governmental structure around it. Um, it's, it's profound, it's beautiful, it's considered to be more from, um, there is a, a Gnostic um, uh, movement in Bulgaria from, um, maybe it was the 15th century, don't, don't quote me on, on that, Bogomili, and the Cathars came out of that. And I recently heard uh, that, all right, I'm not gonna go into this because it's a little bit divisive, but it's a it's 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 a profound teachings. They kind of keep the same principles of uh, uh, that you're familiar in most spirituality or a kind of profound spirituality where there is la uh, focus on love and uh, connection with the divine or God and um, the the Christ consciousness, which is something that we're all to embody in the coming ages. Um, I'm not gonna go deeper into that because that is very much a part of my classes even though I keep a lot of half of the classes are really non non 
spiritual, they're very physical, they're very Aries. I have Mars in Aries. I'm quite, I love the physicality of uh, movement and I like the creativity in movement. All right, so we're gonna go into I teach yoga or movement and I like the physicality in movement, the creativity in movement. So that's my Piscean side where I like to explore things in an unorthodox way. So I have Mercury in Aries. It makes me very um, unconventional in the sense that I wanna discover new things. That is a need of mine. So every, uh, in the 12 signs, every sign has their ego. Uh, say Leo has this large visible ego. Um, uh, Pisces has this dissolved ego, I have aspects of that, and Aries likes to be innovator, likes to be a leader, to be strong, to be known as a strong person, uh, physically, emotionally, so the ego of the Aries to me is in some ways the smallest of, of them all, because Aries just wants to be known as this kind of practical, creative, mind, um, original mind type of person anyways um so that is you know very important to me to be very uh, to explore uh, movement from the inside out i don't like to repeat other people's stuff i don't like to repeat myself either uh, the teacher i studied under one of the teachers i studied under he was very creative and you would never hear him say the same joke repeat the same movement he was just very um genius in that way and I like that to me that is absolutely uh, profound and the more I explore movement the more effective moves I find that are not gonna be in the books so to me that's very important I studied the books of course and I studied alignment to uh, delirium because I have um, enough stuff in Virgo to really care about details and Virgo stuff sorry about the astrology references that's a very deep way of how I understand archetypes I have a brother, he is uh, about 13 years younger than me, probably 12 and a half I think, and uh, he is born on the same day uh, that Johnny is born on, uh, and he is an artist, and uh, he is a part of a traveling circus, and he is um, uh, quite talented with uh, hand-eye coordination stuff. Um, they have quite, they do spec, they do performances that are quite skilled uh, and he's quite a, quite the artist. Anyways, uh, I already mentioned but I've included it in the facts so I'll repeat it. I have a six year old daughter. Um, <laughs> I, I got a good one. What is it? You survived the hyperinflation in 1992. Oh, that's a good one. All right, I didn't include that. So, do oh, you... the Converse story. The, which one? Um, the Converse story, okay. So, I survived <laughs> um, uh, the, one of the biggest hyperinflations, hyperinflations known in history. I don't know if it's the biggest, I forget now. Of course, that goes with one of the other facts. Uh, but it was one of the top I, probably three hyperinflations in uh, non in history a little big political scam if you ask me but anyways that's a different story different topic um basically you would wake up in the morning and um you have i had money to buy converse i like the shoes and I, but I didn't buy them before school, so I went to school, and by the time school ended, I went back to the store, and they were like three, four times the price they were in the morning. So at this point, I had money just for like the worst <laughs> shoes, <laughs> and I got them. Uh, so it, it was a stressful event, and also the food is uh, with the hyperinflation. The country was transitioning from one regime to another bad regime, so from one bad regime to a worse and um until which is until today so um you know the food disappeared all the farms got closed down people lost their jobs um etc that was not my fa family was not affected because my grandparents were farmers and my parents worked uh, that's actually one of the facts but my parents had government jobs so we weren't affected in that way but it was quite a stressful event so now when i go shopping uh, at the store i fill up the trunk 
to the brim with uh, fruits and veggies and um, I asked uh, one time I was with uh, my Bulgarian friends and I was like do you do that is this a Bulgarian thing like do you like just overstock on uh, food and they're like oh yeah for sure <laughs> that, that is you know the drama from um, the inflation all right uh, next I don't think I've ever said, I said that before my dad was in the army quite high in the army in the engineer is it engineer core uh, in the, in yeah, the Andy Corps of Engineers, quite high in the army, but he was a, to, to me, he was a very emotional, emotionally available father, very mushy, uh, kind, tolerant, patient, and just, just uh, like a soft father, but he was quite, quite a, a big army deal. Um, my dream, since I was, uh, late teenage years was to have an orchard and now we uh, moved to an orchard and we are building our dream of creating creating um, uh, will take you with us on the journey of what we're creating it will be a very exciting journey but we're gonna be um, I'll take you as things are unfolding, but I have a lot of visions for it we both uh, Johnny and I uh, have a lot of visions uh, about it and what we'll create and um, produce from it. So it's going to be exciting. We moved to an avocado, uh, orange, citrus orchard with other fruit trees, with aloe, with uh, just with other, uh, other quite a variety of things. Um, we have orchard fruit and all of that. Anyways, next fact, I consider my superpower my mind. I saw other people include their superpower. They can r write, you know, mirror writing. I had a teacher in high school that could write with both hands at the same time different things. She was amazing. She was a math teacher and she could write two problems with her hands like that. And um, she actually really liked me. She was one of, I was in one school that was very problematic. It was very traumatic for me. I moved for two years to a school. Uh, where I didn't know the kids, I didn't make good friends there. It still traumatizes me to this day. And this teacher, she was a math teacher. She really, she really liked me. Uh, and I learned, I learned good math from her. I was good in, in good in math. Uh, but you know, I had bad years in math because I would just not study, and then I'll have to catch up. Um, so uh, back to my uh, superpower. I consider my superpower my mind. I, I just really like the mind space and just exploration of philosophical subjects and just kind of complex subjects. I hate moving. I think I associated with my first move from Bulgaria to America because this move changed my entire life forever and I couldn't have foreseen it. So now every time we move, I feel like on a subconscious level, it sparks that whole process of understanding that my life will forever change and never be the same again. And I moved from Bulgaria where I love my life to uh, America where it took forever to build a life I love. Um, so now when I move, I really get stressed out. I, we have moved from, I have moved quite a few times. I have moved um, to Nevada, uh, to LA, to Nevada, to LA to Austin, Texas, or outside of Austin. We were quite outside uh, of uh, Austin in Spicewood, to um, back to California, but this time not in LA. We are in an um, uh, in, uh, area called Deleuze. Um, it's a farming, uh, beautiful mountain area. Just it's, it's just It's just a beautiful area and everybody has this rolling hills of orchards, of avocado orchards, of citrus. There's like mandarins rolling on the side of the road when you drive and it's just, I, I didn't know a place like this exists. So it was worth the move, but I had to, you know, work with, uh, with, uh, with my program. Um, uh, so I am a type of person that doesn't want to be a, a jack of all uh, trades. I like to focus. I like to hone in and I try, I, and if there is things that interest me, but I know I'm not going to be excellent at them, I just drop them. I don't study them, like even like trades. Like if I know I'm not going to be the best um, 
um, I don't know, musician or some, or like, I don't know, snowboarder or something. Like, I try to focus on the things that I want to dedicate some time to. So, I've, my three biggest focus things are, you know, movement and really studying the art of movement and from a creative perspective. So, innovative creative perspective, just constantly expanding on it and, and seeing the ways of embodiment through movement. It's it's quite profound, it's in a way genius. And it keeps unfolding, the deeper I go, the deeper it gets. So I'm by no means in any way close to any form of final uh, realization or the bottom of you know the dive or the top of the climb. It's just profound. Uh, then I really love astrology. I could have gone for as an astrologer. If had I stayed in Bulgaria, I probably was going to go for that. In spiritual studies and philosophy, it just uh, uh, that is uh, a passion of mine. I like to be really deep, profound, and very to, like deep in it, in my understanding of spirituality. Um, I do get intuitive, just knowing type of things, but I'm not that type of person. I like to study, I like to expand, I like to explore. So I need to study, I don't want to just kind of feel things. Um, that again, ties into my uh, mind, it just, it's a mind that needs to be a little more like in the academic sense of like just constantly going deeper with the studies. Um, that makes me happy, makes me feel really aligned, etc. So it's a, it's a need of mine. I, I don't push myself to do it. It's very important to me to do it. Now, in order to feel happy and fulfilled and balanced and centered, rooted, etc. Um, the third thing that I really study and I'm going to go deeper into it as I uh, create more space in my life for it is uh, plant, plant growing herbalism, etc. Because this is going to be our new focus. Um, I'm very rational and I'm not emotional in the sense that I'm not, I, I, I can experience deep emotion obviously, uh, but it's more like a nostalgic or um, kind of like that type of um, uh, feelings. I'm not sensitive in, in the sense of things that are just kind of random and irrational, they, they don't really deeply affect me unless I'm of my, of my you know, balance. Uh, so I have my days, but overall I'm pretty, um, what you would call dry. And I understand people and their emotionality and sensitivity pretty well from a very kind of clear perspective. So I can see people's viewpoints uh, or reasoning. Uh, another one is I tend, especially if you kind of randomly meet me, to I tend to keep my opinions to myself. And I only... And they really expose them to close friends. They're not very, um, uh, I don't hold a lot of mainstream opinions or things that like I would be, I would reach a large crowd with, like I'm not going to be understood by the masses. Uh, so uh, understanding that I've always understood it since I was very little that I'm a little bit odd uh, in how my mind operates and opinions because I really, I'm a deep diver. So I tend to keep those to myself because I don't like to be weird, which I am. <laughs> but at least I have the awareness of when I'm perceived weird, so I kind of hold back. To where Johnny, he doesn't hold back. He's just as weird, but he doesn't care. Um, I Okay, so this is... I don't know if I should share this one, but there you go. I have been very deeply disappointed and even feelings hurt. Speaking of, you know, not being very sensitive, but I have had my feelings really hurt by uh, girlfriends uh, that I've had, you know, uh, friends that were girls. In the past, I have had a lot of friendships, and some of them ended on a bitter note. Uh, next is, um, ties into the friendships, but I forgive and forget, uh, but I'm very excellent in cutting ties and setting boundaries, and if something is uh, crossed, I just, I'm very good at clear cuts. Um, and I don't hold resentment or grudges, and I tend to remember the positives about people. So I keep a sweetness about the people that I cut out. Uh, so I don't walk around carrying um, um, the negative. I tend to forget why I cut them out, to be honest with you. I tend to forget what was bad about it. My memory, as I mentioned, is bad enough for me to not remember hurtful details. And it's probably a self-protection mechanism, and I also file it in... in in, gra in, um, in a non-important stuff, 
So I work it out and I kind of tend to remember people for what they were good at. I'm good at seeing a person. I'm quite, I can perceive pretty well. I can see people with their shadow and their negative parts and accept it as they are because we all have, we're all very complex. And um, um, I'm pretty good at accepting uh, that we're all going to have complexity and we're all going to, I'm, I can look at a person and see pretty well their shadow. If I cannot see their shadow, it bothers me because that means it's probably more nefarious. But if I can see their kind of personality stuff, I'm very good at accepting that and just uh, and, and just seeing that as the wholeness of the person. And when I let go of people, I'm good about kind of forgetting um, what was negative between us and the sweetness between, because there is always all, all of that in those experiences. Um, this is the last thing I've written down. Um, my first job was, well, that would be my first job in America, official job, it was in Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. And I'm now I'm moving forward towards my dream job, which uh, is uh, creativity with plants in an orchard, but um, I did also a tutor in Bulgaria in English, so that was my first first job when I was in uh, university. And I think those are the facts. I think that was pretty <laughs> extensive, 25 is a lot. Uh, I, I've, I hope that you got to know me a little uh, better and that you relate to some of them. I know I can be a little weird, but I hope you can relate to some of them. So in the comments below, I know most people would say they're very emotional sensitive, so that's not going to be the, the quality uh, that you would relate probably uh, to, but post in the comments below the ones that you related to. I'm curious uh, to also know you. I have an intimate audience. I'm not super, super big uh, in my uh, social media accounts, so there is that more intimate uh, connection uh, that I, I have built with a lot of my on a lot of my platforms so i would like to hear from you and thanks for watching and i'll see you soon namaste